Please be seated. The court is now back in session. Again, the floor is given to the prosecution to continue putting questions to the expert to make to see. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Short, before we proceed uh, to look at some aspects of the treatment of urban classes, I want to take just a brief step back and look at one decision made, it appears, in early 75, and then this decision appears to have had some um, implications for what happened in April 75. You discussed earlier when we looked at how some senior officials of the Khmer Republic regime had been turned back to Phnom Penh, and I think you said you drew an inference that that was a central decision or decision from, from up high. I want to look at a document that is dates back to February 1975. This is one of the documents that we sent you. It's an extract from a foreign broadcast information service transcript for February 1975. The document number here is E3-117. If you, if you don't have a copy, uh, Handy, I'll, I'll, I'll pass one to you. President, with your permission, I'll, I'll pass the expert a copy from, from our bench. President, yes, you may do so. Court officer, could you deliver the document for the expert examination? Thank you, President. This particular extract and I, I acknowledge that the writing is not very clear. It's a very small font, but I'll do my best to read the, the, the passages that I'm interested in for you. The relevant ERNs are Khmer 00242308-9, French 00281432, and English 00166773. This particular document is entitled, or this part of the transcript is entitled, Q Sampan Chair's NUFC Congress Session Communique Issued. And it was broadcast by voice of NUFC in Cambodian to Cambodia on the 26th of February 1975. This is a an extract from that communique, and I'm looking at paragraph one. Quote, concerning the seven traders in Phnom Penh, the National Congress has decided as follows. Traitors Lon Nol, Sirik Matak, Son Yok Tan, Cheng Han, In Tan, Long Bore, and Sustainer Fernandez are the chieftains of the traders and ringleaders of the treacherous anti-national coup d'etat which overthrew the independence, peace and neutrality of Cambodia. And then skipping one sentence, on behalf of the NUFC, RGNUC and CPNLAF, the National Congress declares it absolutely necessary to kill these seven traitors for their treason against the nation and their fascist, corrupt, criminal acts unprecedented in Cambodian history. And just before I ask you some questions, I'll indicate for the record that the communique is also contained in document E3-189, which is a, a, a letter that was submitted to the United Nations General Assembly. It's another document that we sent you, but we, we don't particularly need to look at it. It reproduces, in essence, the, this, this communique. I do note that elsewhere in your book, you commented that you, you didn't think that this, this particular Congress um, actually took place. 
um, que ce so my question is, ma question. which body, if any, within, within the CPK structure or, or within the broader structure, structure of the front um, may have been responsible for the decision if, if you've been able to décision. come to a conclusion on that? Vous des vous euh, euh, de tirer une uh, there is no evidence sujet. apart from this broadcast of any such congress taking place. Um, uh, this uh, is like, it seems to me, to be like the uh, appeal which um, was or the message of support from Hu Nim, Hu Yun, and Kyu Songpan, which. Uh, was sent to Beijing at the time of CNU's destitution. It was uh, a, a, a document uh, written by the Cambodian Party, Communist Party leadership. Uh, what, who exactly in that leadership, whether it was a document drawn up by Mr. Hu Son Pan, but uh, certainly it reflected a decision by the uh, CPK cas, Standing Committee or by Pol Pot himself uh, to uh, reassure Pot others that only those seven named leaders, and I think other names were added to the list uh, later on, but basically a very restricted number of people would risk um, uh, the death sentence, would, would, would risk uh, um, uh, being killed when the Khmer Rouge took over. Uh, that was the object of it. We saw earlier from a passage of your book that we looked at um, that you make specific reference to the execution of Long Boray. Now, the, the, the document is, this particular communique is signed by Q. Sampan according to this document. Uh, are you aware of uh, whether this decision in any form or fashion was communicated si within CPK structures, uh, within the hierarchies, or, or if that, is, that, is that not something you were able to um, ascertain through your research? The fact that it was broadcast uh, by, by their radio station, I mean, obviously amounts to dissemination. Um, so it would have been made known. But who took, what we really don't know is who, who was the decision maker who approved this document. We don't even know whether Mr. Q. Songpan, uh, whether it was simply a matter of using his name whether he was privy to it before it was put out. Um, all we can say with certainty is that this nebulous body um, uh, or group who, who were at the head, uh, head of the CPC certainly approved it and were responsible for issuing it. And just one more question on uh, Hugh Sampan in particular. Uh, in your research, uh, have you uh, come across any evidence of him distancing himself from this decision or, or disagreeing with it in, in that particular period when it was made? Absolutely not, and I'm sure he did not distance himself. Uh, I'm sure he was uh, in agreement with it and, and with the policies which were uh, connected with it. Thank you. The communique also uh, mentions that Others, lower-ranking officials, as you've already intimated, um, were effectively welcome uh, to that they have a full right, in the words of the communique, to join uh, the front, the, the Cambodian nation, nation and people, um, if they cease cooperating with the seven traders. Uh, are you aware of, of the resistance within the country uh, implementing such a, such a policy or, or, or approach of welcoming those who um, were on the, on the Khmer Republic side if they, if they came across. To my knowledge, there is no evidence of that having happened in any case. 
D'après mes connaissances, euh, non, nous n'avons aucune indication que cela s'est produit. Question. Merci. I wish to look at or, or build on one of the passages that we looked at, which was the breaking up of feudal classes, etc. And, and I want to see if we can elaborate on that by looking at um, a few documents. The first document is a revolutionary flag from August 1975. Now, you, you, you won't have a copy of this, but it, it's cited in your book. I had a look to make sure whether this is one of the documents you, you've relied upon, and it's cited in relation to page 341 in English, just, just for the record. I have a copy of it here for you, uh, uh, Mr. President, with your permission. Uh, uh, this is document E3-5, it's the revolutionary flag from August 1975, if I can pass a copy to the expert. President, yes, you can the proceed. Court officer, could you cease the prosecution to deliver the document for the expert examination? To transmit the document of the accusation to the expert. Thank you, Mr. President. So looking at the, the view that the revolutionary flag adopts in relation to what it describes as, as private persons, uh, bourgeoisie, feudalist classes, etc. The relevant TRNs are in Khmer 00063321, French 00538961, and English 00401486. En français 00538961, et en anglais 00401486. So that should be page 11 in the English translation that you have. It's a short. It's a rather long uh, passage, but I'll try and read just a couple of excerpts. Under number three, we see types of private ownership, and the publication goes on to say they have been subjugated to state ownership and collective cooperative ownership, and they are not concentrated, they are scattered, they have no forces, therefore they have no power to oppose. Since we do not allow them the opportunity to strengthen and expand, they will dissolve without fail. If we had left them in Phnom Penh, they would have had strong power. Then below, under point four, it's a, it's a discussion of the class composition in the Kampuchean society. Point number one, the feudalist class has been attacked and overthrown, which is consistent with what, what you've been telling us. A little bit below that. Now the colonialists and imperialists have been overthrown. The landowners and feudalists have been overthrown. The capitalists have been overthrown. And the petty bourgeoisie has no one to rely upon. Therefore, they are subjugated to the state power of worker peasant. Two sentences down. All of these persons are the new peasants who came from the petty bourgeoisie, the feudalists and the capitalists. Their class has been overthrown, their economic foundations have been overthrown, but their outlook and their desires remain the same. Therefore, they continue to be in conflict with the revolution. I'm particularly interested in that last part where, despite having been overthrown, these classes apparently continue to be in conflict with the revolution. Are you able to opine on that at all? This is why they had to be sent down to the countryside to reform themselves, to reform their mentality, uh, to be educated by the peasants. Um, this was not a wholly new idea. The, the Chinese also sent people to the countryside to be uh, reforged through agricultural labor, through, uh, through, through working with the peasants. But uh, the first section you, met out, you, you read out, I mean, clearly that is breaking up the network 
among city dwellers so that they were no longer in a position to resist the regime. And the second uh, extract is about demolishing individuality, demolishing private mental ownership so you become at one with the masses. Might I just say, uh, apropos of what we were discussing in answer to your previous question, th there is one more point to be made. Um, although uh, the, the uh, decision, the, the announcement that only the seven traitors would be killed and others not uh, would be read as, an, as a reassurance, the last line does have a condition. It does say that uh, others will be welcomed provided they immediately cease uh, their cooperation with the old regime. Now, in February, if they didn't immediately cease, that guarantee is no longer good. Thank you. I'm grateful for that further clarification. Just one or two more um, brief passages on this issue of class. Uh, now we're looking at revolutionary flag July 1976, E3-4. This is one of the documents we, we sent you. Um, and with your permission, Mr. President, I'll, I'll give Mr. Short a, a, a copy of the particular extract. Yes, you may proceed. Court officer, could you oui, deliver the document for the, for the expert examination? Thank you, Mr. President. The relevant ERNs are in Khmer 00062911-2, French 00349973, and English 00268918. Quote, becoming socialist requires class struggle between the worker class and the other classes the dictatorship of the worker class over the other classes. If there is no worker class dictatorship over the other classes, socialism cannot be built. If there is no class dictatorship, the enemy will attack us. Ex a little bit further below, ex example, we are building socialism in the cooperatives. If at any time we are careless, if at any time we get loose and relaxed about socialist revolution, if at any time we get relaxed and loose about the proletarian class dictatorship, they will certainly attack us. If we give them freedom to do so, they will attack us. And then it continues on with that, with that general theme, so I'll, I'll stop there in the interest of time. If, if you have been able to, um, to come to a conclusion on this, I'd be interested in your view as to why the policy seems to be still focusing of an enemy that will attack us if we do not carry out class struggle between the worker class and the other classes. What does that relate to, if, if you could explain for us? This is not unique to uh, Democratic Campuchia. Uh, in, in Maoist China, um, throughout, throughout the, that period, uh, 1949, especially from the 50s onwards up to Mao's death, uh, the idea that class struggle was permanent, uh, that bourgeois elements would continue to emerge and would have to be fought down, that bourgeois tendencies would continue to emerge, that, that was absolutely basic in, in China. Uh, a similar idea with which Pol Pot became acquainted when he was a student in Paris was set out by Stalin, uh, that uh, a fortress is most easily taken from within, meaning that the greatest danger to a communist party came from uh, elements uh, burrowing into its leadership and uh, corrupting the, le the leadership of the party. So it, it really isn't unique. What, what is unique here is that they talk about the worker, the proletarian uh, uh, class, uh, uh, 
ex exercising its hegemony over other classes. And I remember having long discussions with Mr. Q. Sampan, which probably will not interest the court, about how you could have proletarian class stance when everybody was a peasant. Um, he didn't convince me, and I didn't convince him. But uh, th this was something which was very different about the, the Cambodian party, that it was essentially a, a, an alliance of, of intellectuals and peasants which who thought, who claimed that they had forged intellectually this worker class consciousness which would uh, allow them to exer exercise hegemony over, over others and thereby uh, repress all those bourgeois tendencies that would emerge spontaneously unless they were clamped down. Thank you. Now, looking at your, at your book, at pages 321 to 322, uh, you deal with a number of areas here, obviously, among them the, the hierarchy that cadre were expected to maintain between base people and, and new people. The relevant ERNs are English 00396529. To three zero, and French zero zero six three nine eight seven seven and following. So, as I said, you first describe the uh, this hierarchy, and then you talk about the use of hunger as a as a punitive weapon, and then over the page you say the following: the indiscriminate killing of former Republican army officers and senior civil servants which had marked the first months of the regime had stopped during the summer. But in the cooperatives, executions of supposed bad elements and others who allegedly violated collective discipline continued. Is there any relationship at all between this view of, 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 of um, a class enemy or, or tendency, class tendencies uh, that are to be stamped out um, and the killing of supposed bad elements or those who uh, violate discipline. The one was the, the justification for the other. Uh, if somebody behaved badly in a cooperative, uh, behaved badly picking up mangoes, Taking, taking food, even if it had fallen on the ground and was not being used by anybody, that was regarded as a manifestation of individualism rather than thinking of the collective. That was seen as bourgeois tendencies emerging in that person who then risked uh, the appropriate retribution. And where this system was different from almost every other communist system is that the appropriate retribution here was death, whereas in China and elsewhere it would have been re-education through labor, it would have been something to enable you to uh, redeem yourself by work and then rejoin the community. Thank you. I, are you able at all to uh, identify a point in time looking at April 75 onwards where this, this began? Was it, was it continuous? Was it uh, something that developed? Was it rooted in prior policies? If you can give us your view on that. It, it, it's very difficult to be precise. It was certainly rooted in prior policies and we saw it happening in um, the liberated areas before 1975. Uh, it then, I think, went you like in, in waves. Uh, there were areas where the pressure became more intense on the cadres, and the cadres uh, adopted a fiercer policy towards those beneath them, the ordinary peasants. Uh, there, there were times when things were easier. It, it depended on a variety of factors and was different in different locations. Thank you. Now, continuing on from that, another aspect of the regime that you discuss in the book is what I'll describe for shorthand as a double standard, and 
I'll ask you to use your words and correct me if I've gone too far. This is at page 346, and then there is another relevant passage at 348. The ERNs are in French 00639909 and following, and in English 00396554 and following. At the first page, at 346, uh, you say, all the leaders grew fat. Contemporary photographs show, show Paul and Nunchia looking bloated. Kusan Pan pulled on weight and acquired an unhealthy reddish complexion. You then describe the ban on foraging, which, in your view, I think uh, made matters worse for those in the countryside. Uh, including the prohibition on, collect, on picking up fruit off the ground, which you just touched on. Uh, and then just one more passage at 348. But in Democratic Ampuchia, the contrast was so flagrant that it became a caricature. Not only did a tiny, cosseted elite preside over the destinies of a nation of slaves, but the regime which that elite imposed made ideological purity, abstinence and renunciation, material detachment and the repression of the ego, the foundations of national policy outweighing all other considerations. The ban on foraging was not an oversimplification by uneducated local officials. It was approved by the national leadership in Phnom Penh. Can I ask you to expand on that? And, and did I go too far in using the word double standard? I'll, I'll, I'll let you give us your elaboration on this, on this contrast. I don't think you went far enough in using the word double standard. It was particularly shocking because at both extremes, the people of Democratic Kampuchea had nothing or so little, whereas in other communist countries uh, where uh, this kind of system, a nomenclatura system, uh, the elite having access to services which are not available to others, um, the, the people had access to at least some things. If you think of China, if you think of Russia, the gap between the two was less. It wasn't because the, the DK leadership uh, had absolute luxury. No, they had more or less what other nomenclaturas in other communist countries had. But in other communist countries, the, the ordinary people had more. Here, they had so, so little, the gap was enormous. And it, it's made more flagrant by this preaching of abstinence. Uh, one can find examples in history. I mean, the princes of the Catholic Church in the medieval times compared with the, the poorest peasantry. But still, uh, the, these are not supposed to be medieval times. This was the 20th century. Thank you. And just while we're on that page, there's another passage of interest further down where you look at concerns which we which you attribute to, to Pol Pot with respect to people being well nourished or otherwise. And you say, revealingly, however, his concern was not that if collectivism failed, people would be discontented, but that individualism would re-emerge. He certainly knew that, in some areas, there was acute privation. Detailed reports from his own leaders arrived on his desk each week. But either he did not wish to think about it, or he regarded it as unimportant. This was not an exception. It was the rule. Whenever ideological principle and practical benefit came into conflict, principle won out regardless of the material cost. Can I first ask you to elaborate, if you could, on your findings in relation to this reporting mechanism and the degree to which uh, information was reaching those, uh, those at the top or in the center? Yes. 
There are uh, copies of telegrams sent from the zones to the center, uh, which, uh, although uh, they don't they don't speak of difficulties uh, as being caused by the policy, of course they wouldn't. Uh, they would speak of sabotage. They might speak of, of natural difficulties, natural conditions, but which make very clear that things were not going well in particular areas. Um, Ying Tirit, uh, Ying Sari's Ying wife, Tirit, uh, made a, a study Sari, tour of the north, the northwest, and came back, nord, nord uh, saying what revenue. she had seen was appalling, and of course it was all due to Vietnamese saboteurs. Um, so the knowledge that things were bad, they knew about that. Donc on que les mal. And, and can you then expand on, on this idea that once in possession of that knowledge, um, you, you, you seem to conclude that the leaders uh, took the view that the principle won out, uh, regardless of the material cost, the ideological principle and practical benefit, where the ideological principle and practical benefit came into conflict, that um, the form of prevailed. Qu'avez-vous à dire là-dessus? Well, foraging is a very good example. Uh, it would have been had people been allowed to forage, um, had they been allowed even very small um, vegetable plots outside their houses, then health and the mortality would have been much better, the mortality rate much lower, people would have been able to work more. Uh, it, it, it's pretty obvious, and uh, the example of countries like China uh, was there to show. Um, even if it is most extreme, existait. the Chinese Même never si went extreme, to that extent. Um, ne sont allés it was là. not permitted in, in democratic Cambodia uh, because of ideological principles. And there are pour des many other examples of a similar kind where the regime similaires. did itself immense unnecessary damage and the people unnecessary damage because they were wedded to iron principles. Parce il était attaché à des considérations de principe. Can I move on to another event which you describe? And this is now at Question. pages 308 and 309 aux pages 308 et of the book. The ERNs are French 00639853 and English 00396516227. You describe a visit Vous décrivez to the southwest une visite effectuée August, dans le sud-ouest um, au mois d'août. That resulting in an understanding on the part of Pol Pot Vous dites that après cela, Pol Pot uh, things that rural cadres had known for months, in other words, that shortages of food and medicine were affecting the labor force. Était vrai à savoir qu'il y avait des pénuries d'aliments et de médicaments affectant la main d'œuvre. It was Ensuite, not the suffering that bothered Paul. It was the fact that lack of food might reduce their ability to work. Rather than bringing in rice from other areas, the best solution, he decided, was to re redistribute the labor force in a balanced manner in accordance with the production needs of the different regions. That became the signal for another wholesale movement of the population. Cette conception donna le signal a little bit further down de over the page, de population. Un peu plus bas, you say, now, just as the dites, crops were ripening and they were looking forward to the fruits of their labor, que les they were uprooted to go to other areas where their muscle power was needed more. Il y avait davantage de as de always, the regime cloaked its intentions le régime in a lie. You state then that it was more than one million people Ensuite, vous dites that were moved. Que plus million de ont été Can I start first with dealing with the actual document Commençons that you, that you cite document for this? Citer. And the document, we have it on the case file, is E3-216. It was one of the documents that we, that we sent you. E3 slash 216. It is entitled Tour Il of the Northwest Zone visite de la zone nord by the Standing Committee, par le comité permanent. or rather, Record of the Standing Committee's visit to the Northwest Zone. La I'd réunion, like to give you a copy of this uh, and see if we can resolve one issue in relation to where the, where the, uh, the visit was. 
Il s'agira uh, de voir quelles ont été les régions visitées. Expert, a copy of this, Monsieur of this le document. Président, j'aimerais pouvoir remettre à l'expert un, un exemplaire de ce document. Le Président, allez-y. Le Président, vous pouvez aller chercher le document. 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 Thank you, Mr. President. L'accusation. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Now, I wish to clarify first this one thing about the, the location of the visit. Laissez-moi préciser um, l'endroit où a eu lieu la visite. If I'm correct, and, and please do correct si me wrong, you, you may have been looking at an English translation of DC CAM, which does say that the trip was to the southwest zone. We've since retranslated that document, uh, and it document actually indicates that it was to the northwest zone, um, dans le nord which, which would appear to be consistent with, with the rest of the decisions that have been made. Les autres décisions uh, but can I just first clarify that? Um, is it possible that, that we're looking at the same document in relation to this tour? Que nous parlions du même document par rapport à cette visite. I think we must be because the dates are the 20th to the 24th of, uh, of August 1975 for both. Um, dans les deux cas. It's a little puzzling in that the, 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 the English translation I saw speaks of Kong Kong Som, which would correspond to the southwest, uh, whereas we're talking here about, uh, about towns in the north and the northwest. I can only assume, yes, you must be right that this was a very um, inaccurate translation. If, if we look at question, um, the page beginning in your version, uh, in English. Par la page. Commençons par la page. I'll just see if I can. So this should be page six in English, just to six. make things easier for en you, anglais. Mr. Short. The Khmer ERN is zero 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 eight four nine two French zero zero three four three three seven nine three seven nine and. English is 00850978. So under that point number two, point two quote, not yet in, in mastery of water problem, its human being strength is insufficient. The labor force must be increased. Three or four hundred thousand more would not be enough. The current strength of one million persons can only work fifty percent. It's imperative to add four or five hundred thousand more. Now, does this decision relate? And if you're not able to answer the question, please let me know. À votre based on information you've gathered and research you've conducted, does it relate to the movement which you then describe uh, as taking place with people being moved to the northwest? Nord yes, it clearly does. Um, de toute évidence, with the oui. permission of the court, I would like, when si I uh, later today, after this session, to journée, check, insofar as I can, with the documents that I may be able to have access to, to, um, to establish this, because I am quite honestly puzzled by this difference of, ce, of location. That, uh, that would be very helpful with the President's permission, I think, that would be appropriate. Thank you. Je crois que ce serait effectivement opportun avec l'autorisation de la Chambre. Now, just looking at the movement, you said in the passage we looked at earlier, Dans le passage as always, examiné, the regime cloaked dit, its intentions toujours, in a lie. A Can I ask you to expand on that? How did you come to that conclusion that this again was a lie? Avez-vous tiré cette conclusion qu'il s'agissait d'un nouveau mensonge? The, the lie this time was that people fois, would be allowed to go to their homes, de dire que les gens uh, those who à had, chez eux. were from home villages si les gens elsewhere village, would now be allowed endroits, to go to them. Ils um, à and retourner. in fact, they weren't going to their en homes, fait, they were going to new allaient, collectives in the northwest where labor was needed. Le nord là où on avait de Thank mandat. you. Now, Merci. moving on to another passage of this page. Je passe à un autre passage de cette même page. You say the following. Voici ce que vous dites. It was not 
any logical policy, but Ce the timing was terrible. Une politique illogique. There was no way the Northwest could cope with hundreds of thousands of extra mouths which arrived too late for their owners to grow new crops, but in time to require feeding from the whole inadequate harvest planted for a much smaller population several months before. Moreover, it underlined the principal reason of the April evacuation to Paul and his colleagues. The Cambodian people were no longer individual human beings, each with hopes and fears, desires and aspirations. They had become soulless instruments in the working out of a grand national design. Can I ask you to expand on that conclusion? Pouvez-vous vous étendre sur cette conclusion? Uh, unless I misheard you, I think the phrase says it underlined the principal lesson of the April uh, evacuation, not principal reason. Um, yes, it's once again the idea that people are expendable, that the ends justify the means, that the goal of making Cambodia strong uh, and prosperous uh, uh, outweighs any considerations of the well-being of the population in the short or medium term. Have you been able to Question. consider in any detail the, the effects that the decision and the movement had on, on those that it affected? De cette décision et de ces déplacements? I hesitate. Um, I, 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 th I think there are not statistics, but there are indications that uh, those who were sent to the Northwest had a singularly difficult time. Um, I talked to a Chinese interpreter in Beijing who had been in Cambodia, uh, Democratic Cambodia, that autumn, and who described seeing these endless uh, trails of people marching on the roads going from the south to the north. Um, so the, the reality of the of the, the mass movement of population, there are eyewitnesses who, who Donc, il y a can des testify oculaires to that. Qui de de ces Thank you. I'm now going to turn to a whole new Question. topic. Merci. I just realize it's late in the day. And you must différent. be getting tired. Il se fait tard, je le sais. Vous devez commencer à être the, the next topic I'm going to deal with has to do il with à présent the events which I believe you described mostly in a chapter called Stalin's Microbes, dans le essentially the, the enforcement of, of, the, of the security apparatus uh, purges within party ranks, et de de sécurité, au de, and de also the way that direction. you might have affected those outside the ranks. Vous aussi de la façon I want to start first with a, a toucher les gens what you seem to be describing as a as a view that the leadership took with respect to those um, that were being evacuated, and I see that informs this discussion, at least insofar as those outside the ranks is concerned. This is at page 283 now. Oran, la page the French ERN is 006 39820, English is 00396491. And in fact, if you turn over the page, and just in the interest of time, I'm going to read a shorter part of this. Quote, soldiers everywhere are trained to secure their objectives without paying too much attention to the damage they cause along the way. In the case of the Khmer Rouge, this was compounded by ignorance and extreme youth. Nonetheless, the political context which allowed them to act as they did had been defined over the previous decade by Paul and the CPK Standing Committee. A little bit further down, Different leaders with a different ideology different might have chosen a policy of national reconciliation. Paul decided otherwise. Paul a decidé to him, the city Pour dwellers lui, and the peasants who had fled to join them in the dying months of the war were ipso facto collaborators and had to be dealt with as such. In the next paragraph, paragraph a brief suivant, sentence, soldiers were urged to cut off their hearts towards potential enemies a category which included 
aux Les soldats euh, étaient exhortés à se couper de leur cœur devant les ennemis potentiels, une catégorie qui incluait tous les déportés et les Commençons par là. Urban deportees as enemies le fait and que les the citadins déportés étaient des ennemis instruction given to et les instructions the soldiers. données aux soldats. I would simply say it's consistent with everything we've, we've been describing about the ends justifying the means, about making a clear line of demarcation between the enemy and ourselves, uh, about the, uh, those who chose to vote with their feet and stay in the cities rather than joining the revolution being untrustworthy. I would say one more thing. Uh, the, I wrote those with a different ideology, a different approach uh, might have of, uh, autre of, uh, chosen uh, autre national reconciliation, but that implies trust. Mais ceci if you reconcile with a different group, you are si giving them your confidence, you are showing that you, you trust them to work with you. And one of the characteristics of the, of the Cambodian Communist Party was there was a complete, a total lack of trust in all those who were outside the party, and indeed, a suspicion of those who were within, which is what led to the purges. Lack of trust was fundamental to this regime. L'absence de confiance était un aspect essentiel de ce régime. I want to turn to Question. a concept which I don't think we've touched upon just yet, um, and this is from a revolutionary flag magazine again. Uh, this time, the October to November 1975 edition. Uh, we've sent you a copy of this uh, particular Nous document as well. Uh, Mr. President, this is E3-748. With your permission, I'll give the experts Monsieur le Président, the pages that we'd like to cite from. À l'expert les pages qui nous intéressent. The President, you may proceed. Le Court Président, officer, please uh, get prie, the document from the prosecutor and hand it over expert. to the witness for his examination. So in your, in the copies I've just handed you, Mr. Short, it's, it's on, it should be on the second page, the passage Deuxième where I wish to start. Uh, the relevant ERNs here are uh, Khmer 00632-38 and following, French 00499-685 and English 00495-802. Again, it's a long document, so I'm going to try and be selective. C'est un long document. Je vais épingler les passages qui nous intéressent. Quote: The robust organizational stance la position under the party class organizational line means we shall parti, never condone any carelessness that allows the enemy to infiltrate and borrow from within the party the revolutionary rank in the present and in the future. Aujourd'hui et à l'avenir. And in the next paragraph, the paragraph second sentence, suivant, deuxième phrase. when the party has taken full Quand power le parti and control a pris across the country, the revolutionary pays, vigilance stance became even more important est plus since important it, is essentially it is an essentially basic factor conducive to the rapid victory in the national defense and reconstruction. In the absence of revolutionary vigilance stance, the revolutionary enemy can regain their power. Thus, the revolutionary at any time has to strengthen his or her revolution vigilance stance in order to eliminate any secret and overt tricks of any kind of imperialists. In particular, the American imperialists and its lackeys, then and only then, we can successfully defend and rebuild our nation. Just looking at the time of this document, being from October, November 1975, October, and I know you, we will get 75. to the events of 1976 that you describe in the book. Vous en dans votre uh, livre. Could you opine as to the introduction or, or the use of this concept of enemy borrowing from Il within the need to maintain revolutionary vigilance at this, at this stage of the regime? De vigilance révolutionnaire. Qu'en est-il du moment 
auxquelles ces idées sont exprimées. Réponse. Again, it shows consistency. Cela uh, it is, you're quite right, it's, it's early on, raison, um, nous en sommes October, November, tôt, because it was probably October, written in November, October, uh, November 75, November at a time when it, uh, even from the standpoint of the regime, uh, point de de regime uh, the burrowing in of enemies of the revolution was, was not revolution a, a very obvious problem. Pas un problème but uh, I think one can find Cela um, étant, <laughs> Precursors of this kind of document going back before 1975. Uh, that has been their consistent standpoint. And when uh, the relationship with Vietnam became more difficult, 1976 and so on, uh, then what had been partly theoretical up to then uh, became much more a matter of, of practice. Now moving on to the events of Question. early 1976, and this starts from page 354 of your book, which I believe is, a, is an entire new chapter. De votre livre. Um, un nouveau chapitre. I, I won't be reading immediately from that page, Je vais pas tout de suite citer cette page, but I'll go to the fo page following, again in the Je interest of time. La suivante, the ERNs are French 003 and English 0-0-3-9-6-5-6-3. describing here a, an explosion uh, that had taken place in, in Siem Reap. And then at, on the following page, or rather at the bottom of that page and then the page that follows, you say the following. Voici ce que vous dites. At the end of March, Hu Nim informed Paul of a scandal Hunim involving Paul Paul Tun, 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 the former Northern Zone Paul Secretary, Tun, secretary who was now Nord, Minister of Commerce. Commerce. And you describe the specific information that was provided to him in relation to Paul Tun. Tun. Then you say, Tun. to Paul, this raised Voici serious questions. Paul, Tun's behavior went against everything the revolution stood for. Ce comportement Siem Reap was in the zone he used to head, and Sot was a long-time associate. Could Thorn have been implicated in the Siem Reap event? On April the 8th, the minister was placed under house arrest at K1, the former bank building where Paul had made his headquarters. Another northern zone veteran, Thorn, the director of the central committee's general office, was appointed to act in his place. Soon, evidence emerged that Dawn had been privy to Dawn's activities and might have covered up for him. In the hothouse world of democratic Kampuchea, it began to look as if there, was a, there were a northern zone conspiracy to overthrow the regime. Can I ask you, I'm dealing with a number of events, again, uh, in the interest of time, but can I ask you to opine as to the significance, if any, of, of these developments for what was to follow? Qu'en est-il de l'importance de ces faits par rapport à ce qui s'est produit par la suite the center that is Pol Pot and Nguyen Chia ever really got to the bottom of what had happened in Siem Reap. Certainly something happened. There were reports to the standing committee, which we have minutes of. Yang Seri said to me it was an uprising. Something serious happened which bothered them. And then these other kind of lateral factors became involved. For a, a, a regime which was very prone to paranoia, it was easily depicted as a conspiracy. And if there's a conspiracy, uh, how far do its ramifications reach? This was the first incident of its kind. So it, it was, if you like, the trigger for the theoretical vigilance which we looked at in November 75 and went back earlier to start to become a necessary uh, attitude, necessary because uh, there was apparent evidence of attacks, conspiracies against the regime, therefore you start looking at that, therefore you start looking at other possible conspiracies. So it was important. In this, in this part of the book, and indeed in the passage I, I just read, you referred uh, to an individual called Sot. But elsewhere in this, in this part, 
you describe ailleurs dans le texte how he reported to the standing committee on the investigations of the, of the Siem Reap event. Uh, I'd like to show you a document now, Siem which is another document that we've sent you. Un autre document This is a, vous a minute communiqué. of un meeting on base work. Réunion. It's dated Sur the 8th of March, 1976, and the document number is E3 slash 232. Uh, Mr. President, with your permission, I'll give Président, the expert a copy. Je demande la permission de remettre un exemplaire de ce document à l'expert. The President, you may proceed. Le Président, Court officer, please uh, bring Monsieur the document audience, from the prosecutor and hand it over to the expert. Mr. President, with your permission, Question. we can also display it on the screen, if that's of any assistance, uh, at least for those who can read Khmer. We have a Khmer version that can be displayed. The President, you le may proceed. AV Assistant, I instructed to put the document, document up on screen as per the request écrans. by the prosecutor. Thank you, Mr. President. If we look at the first page of the document, Mr. Shaw, what will appear on the screen will be the Khmer version, the original. À nous um, original Khmer. The composition of the meeting, uh, we see Participant Comrade à la Secretary, Camarade Comrade Secretary, Deputy Secretary, Camarade and Comrade Hem, Camarade as well Hem. as Comrade Dorn. Just for the record, can I ask you to pour identify mémoire, for us who, who you understand those individuals to be? Pourriez-vous nous dire qui sont, selon vous, ces personnes? Comrade réponse, Secretary is Paul Pot, Comrade Deputy Pot, Secretary is Nguyen Chia, Comrade Hem is Q Sampon. Enough. Uh, and Comrade Dunn. Comrade Dunn. I, I, in my head, I, I simply knew him as Comrade Dunn, um, and that nom. is how he's referred to in the book. It is obviously a revolutionary name. C'est bien sûr un pseudonyme révolutionnaire. Indeed, uh, but to confirm, then it's the same Dunn. It's the same. C'est bien le même Dunn. Réponse oui. It is indeed the same Dern we've been referring to. He was the head of the Central Committee General Office, which was an absolutely key position. Ce qui était un poste crucial. What is interesting about this document Question. is that it appears to contain record, reports by three individuals, uh, Shreng, Sot, and Hong, uh, from three different sectors, 303, 106, and 103. 106 is Comrade Sot, individual I think we Camarade referred to, Sot. Uh, and his reports indicate Il that no clear route of the events in Siem Reap on 24 February have been discovered. De is that Siem the information that you were looking at when, when uh, fait you wrote that passage in the book we looked at? D'explication. Est-ce que cela is this, this à ce que vous, the for that. vous avez utilisé Now, comme source pour votre ouvrage Réponse, Shreng's effectivement, c'est la source. Question in relation to sector concernant 303, Shreng sur le secteur 303. He says, or rather the report says the following. Voici ce que dit Comrade rapport. Shreng reported to par on the activities of a group and their associates, 34 persons whom the zone military have all already arrested. Par de la zone. The group of A Uk Moon, alias Uk Hong, which attempted to flee to southern Vietnam, and four or five of their associates, and asked for instructions from Ankar. Nous demandons les instructions de l'Ankar. And just in the interest of time, I'll read one more passage and then temps, I'll ask you some questions. Hung's report passage. in relation to Rapport sector 103 le 3, includes the following information. As for the entire sector, there is no enemy activity, just groups fleeing in from different locations, like fleeing from 303 or from Kampong Chinai. Since January, almost 100 have been arrested. As far as your research takes you, uh, does this reflect a, a, a general practice of reporting uh, to leadership? Because uh, it does seem to be fairly specific. There are names uh, given, 
and, and numbers of people arrested. Des noms sont cités, des nombres d'arrestations sont donnés. It's very typical, in my judgment, uh, moi, of the, the, the documents of that time, either telegrams or minutes of standing committee meetings, yes, de de details of uh, conditions in the base areas, sur la of uh, disruption, de la base. people fleeing, it is absolutely standard material. Mr. President, I'm mindful of the time, would you like to stop at this stage? Je jette un coup d'œil sur ma montre. Voulez-vous que... Je m'arrête. Le président. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. Merci. And thank you, uh, witness, et merci uh, the expert. à l'expert. The time is now appropriate Le for the day adjournment. De lever the chamber will adjourn now and resume tomorrow on Wednesday, the 8th of May 2013, from 9 o'clock in the morning. We will resume the hearing of the testimony Nous by the expert, uh, Philip Short, and the question will be put by the prosecutor in the morning and followed by the uh, lead co-lawyer for the civil parties. And then in the afternoon, uh, the floor will be given to the uh, defense team, beginning with the defense team for Mr. Nguyen-Chia. Mr. Philip Short, uh, your testimony has Monsieur not Philippe yet been Short, concluded. So votre so the Chamber would like to once again invite you to come to provide your testimony again tomorrow morning. Matin. And court officer is instructed to um, coordinate en with the uh, VESU unit in order to assist him in uh, his transport and arrangement for uh, him for the day and have him back in this uh, courtroom uh, before 9 tomorrow morning. And uh, security guards are instructed to bring the co-accused back to the detention facility and have them return to this courtroom before 9 o'clock in the morning. Mr. Nguyen Chia is to be brought to a holding cell downstairs uh, so that he can follow the proceeding by remote means. The court is now adjourned.